Well, a fine good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia, and I am traveling for history. I'm in Winooski, Vermont today, and actually I'm trying out a new microphone. So you can let me know how it sounds. It's a lapel uh, microphone, but admittedly I am actually holding it close to my mouth. It has this little wind sock on it, which is supposed to help with the wind sound and hopefully the traffic sound and the airplane sounds. Holy cow, crazy loud at uh, 5 or 4 p.m. But I digress, I suppose. I want to talk about not so much the building in front of us, but rather the site. Because before this place was built, there was another building standing here. And actually, it's fairly reminiscent of what's here now. Uh, actually, let me restate that. This building is fairly reminiscent of what was standing here. And what had been standing here was called something called the Corporation Hall. So what I'm going to read to you is actually written by Al Blondin. It's, it's uh, informational... Uh, sheets I had picked up when I was visiting the Winooski Historical Society Museum. That's a video on that. I'll include that, include that in the description below. But uh, I thought this was pretty interesting and it, it, it took me a little bit to um, uh, figure out which one it was. But it's this, this uh, site right here. So, quote, the uh, corporation block ranks next to the Winooski block as the most important commercial block in the city. Its historic brick facade blended well with other city buildings. Its first floor held a storefront appearance, while the upper level floors were suitable to office and community events held in the large hall on the third floor. The name Corporation came from the fact that it was built and under the direction of the Burlington Woolen Company that first consolidated the failing mills at Winooski Falls during the Civil War built large modern factories, and turned army contracts for blankets and uniforms into great profits. In the process, Winooski changed from a sleepy crossroads hamlet of several score buildings into a prosperous industrial village in which the Woolen Company maintained an unchallenged position of economic and political superiority. The quote-unquote general agent of the mills for many years was F.C. Kennedy, who lived at first in the company-owned mansion at the top of Main Street and later built his own palatial three-and-a-half-story house at the head of Maple Street in Burlington. Uh, let me unquote that for a moment. You've seen, if you've been watching my videos, and you've been watching my videos, right? You've already seen that. It was actually the second location of the Provost Sanitarium. So I'll... Uh, I'll include um, that link in the description below as well. And then you can have an idea of, well, actually you'll have no idea what it originally looked like. Uh, but if you watch the Provost Sanitarium, I do include a photograph of that place, uh, a likeness of it maybe is a better word. All right, uh, quote, in 1878, Kennedy commissioned a Boston architect by the name of Carl Famer, capital F-E-H-M-E-R, to design a large commercial block for the company and hired a local contractor, George Nash, to oversee construction. The total cost of the construction of the building was $8,500. Yep, $8,500. Kennedy's idea was to run a company store where mill employees could purchase goods on credit against their wages. In addition, the store was to be the first modern department store in Vermont after the recent fashion of Fifth Avenue and other large city stores. Kennedy appointed his orphaned nephew, Henry Mason, as store manager. The store was run much like a fine department store with several department managers and one general manager. This ambitious project raised the hackles of Winooski's merchants who operated on a cash basis and were afraid that they wouldn't be able to compete against the company's liberal credit policy. However, cries of monopoly turned to snickers when Henry Mason pocketed the store's receipts one night and departed to parts unknown. Kennedy was left holding the bag, had to make good in his nephew's newfound fortune, and eventually was forced into bankruptcy and the loss of his big new house. The company then decided to give up on the idea of owning its own store and leased the building's ground floor to a dry goods business. The store opened again in 1886 under the direction of Safford, Humphrey and Company and became the first enterprise of Winooski to have electric lights. The second floor housed company offices and the third floor was designed as a meeting hall. This third floor was the site of many village activities and on October 12, 1899, the Winooski Entertainment Association was founded in this hall. The Club Champlain presented French drama here, sometimes featuring uh, local talent. 
And from January to early spring, the Winooski Dance Assemblies, an incorporated group of dues-paying members, held dances there every Thursday evening. They hired their own band, and the Howard Opera House Orchestra from Burlington furnished their music. The club also brought in traveling companies during the winter season to perform before local audiences. The hall also became known as a location for many of the local graduation exercises. Winooski schools also held their grammar and high school graduations from uh, there from 1890 to 1912. In later years, many businesses, including grocery stores, restaurants, and club and bingo halls occupied the first floor, while the upper floors took on tenants like a bowling alley and meeting rooms. And the third floor, with its auditorium, was the site of many theatrical productions and later became social halls for the Eagles Club and the St. John the Baptiste Club. Don't know if you heard that music, but um, someone on a motorcycle is playing music. In June of 1931, the Conseil Saint-Laurent, number 35 of Lyon Saint Jean-Baptiste d'Amérique, purchased the block from the Woolen Company. The Conseil, organized in Winooski in 1901, carried out a tradition of French mutual benefit societies in the village. In later years, the hall was to succumb to a fire and was torn down to be replaced by the present building, which had been the home of Casey Family Services. Um, in 2007. So hard to believe this building has been here for 14 years now. Um, a conseil, by the way, is spelled uh, capital C-O-N-S-E-I-L. If I'm mispronouncing any of those words, please feel free to correct me. <laughs> um, I have been corrected before. It's perfectly fine. So that's what I really wanted to say about this building right here, which had been the site of the Corporation Hall. And um, it's at the site of, uh, what's it called, Optum. Don't know what kind of business that is, but you can tell me. Maybe I'll Google it. Who knows? Anyway, thanks so much for coming along with me today. If you enjoy my videos, and you know, why don't you? Why, why wouldn't you? I, um, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel, sharing my videos, help me grow. We can grow together. We can explore history together. All right, on that lovely note, y'all have a great evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.